Welcome back my luxurious fleet and the new Toyota Supra is upon us after all these years however this time around you can argue that it's more German than it is Japanese. Is there a better JDM option out there that has been under our noses this whole time? Hit that like button and I'll see you on the other side. The last Supra Mark IV rolled off the assembly line in Toyota City, Japan in 2002. Since then, Toyota has been kind of non-existent in the high performance realm, or have they? Toyota's luxury division, Lexus, has been hard at work for a long time now on improving their luxury lineup with performance models and variants. This all started back with the ISF that was eventually followed up with the legendary LFA. Some of you may be thinking, but Kirk, the ISF is a sedan. The LFA is a supercar. How does this relate to the Supra? I'll tell you how. In 2014, Lexus unveiled the 2015 RCF. It was a V8-powered version of their brand new luxury sport car, the RC. The RCF was the first high-performance coupe Toyota Lexus had produced since the Mark IV Supra. Last fall, the RC non-F received a, fret, a refresh with new front and rear lights, bumpers, and wheels. Uh, Apple CarPlay too, by the way. Has the Supra successor been with us since 2015 in the form of the RCF? Yes and no. It's 100% JDM. It's rear-wheel drive, front engine, coupe like the Supra is. Well, Supra was. However, the biggest difference is the power plant. The RCF is powered by a glorious 5-liter V8 that revs up to 7,200 RPM, whereas the Supra was traditionally powered by an inline 6 and had the option of the twin-turbo variant that we all know and love. Fast forward to 2019 and Toyota has finally revealed the Mark V Supra. It had been 15 years since our last glimpse of a brand new Supra and we have a lot to take in. Instead of Toyota doing everything in house like they did with all the previous generations of the Supra, they decided to work with BMW to reduce costs. This has left many longtime fans of the Supra uh, disappointed and forcing them to look elsewhere for their JDM Sport Coupe fix. In comes the RCF, a pure 100% Japanese sport coupe. In this video, we'll compare and contrast the Lexus RCF and the brand new 2020 Toyota Supra. Followers of my channel will know which one I would personally lean towards, but let's break it down in the most objective manner possible, which isn't very easy to do. We'll compare these two beasts in styling, performance, and metrics, which is one category, reliability, tunability, comfort and handling, and last but not least, price. And before we jump in, we are comparing the RCF to the Supra, not the Track Edition RCF, and we're not comparing the RC350 or the RC300. This is the RCF, not the Track Edition or the non-F version to the brand new Supra. If you want to know more about the track car, please click somewhere around here. I made a video on it, but let's get into this. First category we're gonna get into is styling. The RCF takes a cake on this, especially with the just announced 2020 RCF. The 2020 Supra kind of looks like a Mazda RX-8 successor. The RCF has really, really strong lines, but it's a really simple and elegant design overall, in my opinion. The original Supra, had very simple and elegant lines as well. And I feel like the RCF embodies that original design a little bit better than the modern Supra. The new Supra just doesn't do it for me. The looks are overstyled compared to the, the previous Supras. At the spotlight, I think the Supra would probably get you a little bit more looks, which if you're into that sort of thing, then yeah, by all means go with the Supra. Of course, some of you are gonna hate the spindle grill on the Lexus car, uh, the RCF. I think it looks really, really good in the RCF implementation, especially for the 20, uh, 2020 refresh of this RCF. Yes, I know this category is purely sub subjective. Styling is always very subjective, but I think a lot of you are probably going to agree with me down below. Uh, but let me know what, which one that you think looks better. Did I say that right? Which one looks better to you? I'll see in the comments on that. Next category. Next category is performance. Well, they perform quite similarly, to be honest, uh, especially in terms of zero to 60, they're right, right neck and neck. I would assume it's probably down to conditions and tires and driver experience, things like that. 
and the right launch technique. The RCF is not the easiest car to launch. There's no real launch control, but the RCF with its superior horsepower has a faster quarter mile time and a higher top speed. Which of these cars would win around a track? I think it's hard to say. I think the Super would probably have the edge in most situations, um, but it's it's really, I think it would depend on the track and the, and the driver. Other than that, yeah, these cars are very, very similar in performance. The Super does have the biggest advantage in two two categories, I would say. It has a shorter wheel ba wheelbase, so it's probably gonna be a little bit easier to steer in tight corners and also weighs about 560 pounds less than the RCF. For street pur purposes, both are more than enough to get you into a heap of trouble with the local authorities. For most prospective buyers, neither car is going to be pushed to its absolute limits uh, in the lifetime by their owners, I guarantee it. If I were to own either of these cars, if I had to pick which one I'd rather listen to, I know this isn't really a performance metric, but it kind of is because the motors are tied to performance. Yeah, I'd rather listen to the glorious V8 all day long in the RCF. I think most of you would rather listen to a V8 as well instead of a forced induction in line six, but let's move on. Overall performance, I think I would give these two cars a tie. You have more horsepower and torque in the RCF, better quarter mile time, better top speed, and then in the Supra you have much lighter weight, shorter wheelbase, so it's probably better in the corners, uh, but I kind of give these cars a tie um overall in performance but we don't we don't have enough metrics from the supra at this point to say which one is definitely better in certain circumstances next category is reliability which one is reli more reliable a lexus or bmw bmw or lexus hmm if you plan on spending as little time and as little money uh, in repairs for the RC, for for either of these cars, it has to be the RC. Like, there's no way. This car is super bulletproof. Lexus is known to be the most reliable automaker and quite possibly the most reliable automaker ever. BMW does not have that same sort of integrity to them. Yeah, they do some things pretty well, and I hear really good things about this inline six that they have going on in the Supra. Toyota wouldn't put their brand image on the line if they didn't believe the R or the the Supra had good reliability with this joint platform with BMW. Or they might be taking a risk and compromise their brand image and their their known reliability just to cut costs and do that by sharing development costs with BMW. Only time will tell how reliable this brand new Supra really is. We all know the previous Supras were pretty darn reliable. However, we know that the Lexus RCF is bulletproof in pretty much every aspect of the vehicle. If, you, if there's some owners of the RCF watching this, let me know if you've had any issues with the RCF. I haven't heard anything working at Lexus. RCF and Lexus definitely are winning this category in reliability over the Supra. Next category is tunability. Not sure if tunability is a real world. Re Not sure if tunability is a real word, but I know you guys know what I'm talking about here. Lexus has never been known to be the most tuner friendly car brand. The Supra, however, became one of the most iconic vehicles ever produced because of its ability to, to be turned into a thousand horsepower monster from a lot of tuners around the world. It didn't seem to be that difficult to do it. I highly doubt the new Supra will be able to reach anywhere close to a thousand horsepower, but I guarantee we'll be seeing some incredible uh, tuning feats with the new Supra. As far as the RCF is concerned in terms of tuning, I don't know a lot about it. Uh, just over a quick search I was able to find, you can find some supercharger kits for it that increases horsepower quite substantially. It's about 10 grand to put this supercharger kit in, but it puts 570 horsepower to the rear wheels. So like I said, I, I'm not the biggest tuner guys. I, I don't know a lot about the tunability of the RCF. I doubt it's gonna be as good as the Supra. But again, if there's some RCF owners out there, definitely put in the comments below what, what are some things that you have done or you know are capable of doing to the RCF. But I'm definitely gonna give the edge of tunability to the Supra here just because of its past experience um, being tuned. And I know tuners are gonna go crazy trying to get the most out of this inline six BMW engine. Next category is comfort, interior quality, and overall livability. This is kind of one big old category here. I've been in a few RCFs that are incredibly, incredibly comfortable and the interior is 
definitely Lexus grade high quality. The Supra is essentially BMW on the inside. BMWs in my experience ride very stiff. They are sporty. They are definitely more performance oriented than any Lexus I've been in. That sort of BMW stiff sporty ride is going to feel right at home in the Supra. However, if you plan on driving your sport coupe every day, the RCF is going to be a far more enjoyable experience unless you like a bumpier ride. Um, if you live in like Florida, for example, and your roads are absolutely perfect, then you could probably have a very comfortable time in the Supra. However, most of us live in reality where our roads are complete shit, there are bumps everywhere, potholes. RCF is going to handle that a lot better. It's going to be a lot more comfortable ride and a much more pleasurable one to live with. One of the reasons the RCF weighs so much more than the Supra is because of Lexus's approach to comfort. Lexus uses a lot of sound deadening materials and no shortage of luxury amenities, which increases the overall weight. Uh, yeah, there's also a big V8 that's going to weigh more than the inline six as well. RCF sacrifices the lightweight flickability of the Supra in exchange for a more comfortable and inviting experience. So I mentioned that wheelbase earlier. A longer wheelbase and a coupe is definitely going to make it ride much smoother in more leisure-like situations, which most of the time people are going to be riding these things in more leisure-like situations. You're not always going to put, be pushing your car to the max. I'm going to play some side-by-side -side photos of the interiors of the two vehicles. There's no doubt the RCF is much more impressive from the inside, um, especially the steering wheel. You have the aluminum pedals, you got the magnesium paddle shifters, you got touches of Alcantara all around, and even the back seats in the RC RCF are exquisitely detailed. One of the biggest attractors for the Super, in my opinion, pretty much a BMW on the inside and the BMW drive selector joystick, I don't like at all. If the new Supra had a six speed manual, I think the public would be lining up around the world to get their hands on the Supra. Instead, we get an eight speed auto, which makes it faster. Of course, it's going to be a lot faster than the six speed manual, but that Supra is about the thrill, and there's nothing that gives you a better thrill than shifting your own gears, doing it yourself. And the stick shift speaks to the hearts of most enthusiasts, not a joystick that has a park button on it. What was I talking about? Yes, the, the Lexus has a traditional gear shift instead of the joystick in the BMW. I mean, Supra. Lexus takes this category easily for comfort, into your quality, and overall day-to-day -day livability. Next category is price. This category is really, really important, arguably one of the most important categories. Uh, we can compare cars all day, but unless they cost roughly the same, it doesn't matter. Super costs around $50,000, and now these are kind of entry-level prices I'm giving you. While the RCF is going to start around $60,000 or $65,000. Both are not cheap by any means. At about $15,000 less, the new Super is the logical pick over the RCF for budget conscious customers. But what if you could get an RCF for the same price as a brand new MK5 Mark 5? Is it what do you is it MK5 or Mark 5? If I've been saying it right when I say Mark 5, I don't know. I'm not the biggest car enthusiast when it comes to the Supra. I grew up with it in terms of it being a cultural icon and the need for speed games and the fast and the furious. Is it Mark? I think it's Mark 5. Let's get back into it. What if I told you if you can get an RCF for less money than a brand new Supra? Well, you freaking can. Yeah, it's gonna be used. I found a 2015 RCF for just 44, almost $45,000. It only has 22,000 miles on it. Still, even though you can get an RCF on the used market, it's not an apples to apples comparison. The Supra win wins here overall in price loan when you're looking at new to new. However, you can argue that the RCF is a better value for the overall experience you get. In conclusion, let's tally up the scores and who won each individual segment. We'll put it all together and we'll get a winner, at least my subjective quality winner. Styling goes to the RCF. Performance is a tie, so we're not gonna count that one. Reliability goes to the RCF. Tunability goes to Supra. Comfort interior quality and everyday livability goes to the RCF. Price goes to the Supra. Overall, the RCF wins three to two over the Supra. In my, you could say somewhat biased or some, I mean, yeah, the, this isn't the most objective test, but I'm sure you guys can see a lot of the objectivity I tried to put in here. Uh, but let's get it, let's just get back into the conclusion. 
Although many of us had imagined the Supra would come back in a different fashion with dreams and hopes of a 3JZ motor and it being the next fire-breathing dragon from Japan, I'm still happy that Toyota did come out with another Supra. I'm just disappointed as well as many of you are that it's really just a BMW with a Toyota badge and Supra badge. The RCF and the Supra aren't completely in the, the same segment, but I thought it would be fun to compare these two Japanese sport coupes that are both new or refreshed for 2020. If you had the money for either vehicle, which one would you pick and why? I'd obviously get the RCF. The V8 is intoxicating, the comfort is great uh, in the RCF, and the reliability is gonna be bulletproof. Oh, and I think it looks a lot better too. I don't think it's over stylized like you see in the Supra. But don't forget to like this video, guys. I'll see you down in the comments below. I know there's gonna be quite a, quite a battle here. Hopefully I attracted some, some Supra guys to my channel. Um, I do cover Toyota now and then, but right now I'm focusing on Lexus and eventually I'll be branching out to other, other luxury brands and maybe dabble with Toyota from time to time. But let me know if you have any questions and I can't wait to see what you guys think about the RCF versus the Supra down below. Until next time, peace.